Oh, hey, thanks for tuning in. So, you might have noticed I have already lost interest in Legends Arceus. The thing is, um, that game would have taken a very long time, and I'm more into platformers. So, what I thought was, I'm gonna let's play a speedrun. Yeah, I'll do the impossible. I'll split it up into seven parts, basically, explaining the whole 100% speedrun of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. I will not speedrun it. Um, oh, of course, I could just take out the timer then. Okay, that's better. I'm not gonna speedrun it at first, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain it, and then I'm going to speedrun each world once, so yeah, it takes 14 days, and then I'll do a full speedrun. The thing is, we of course have to start off. We choose funky mode, because funky makes this whole thing a lot easier. Um, while the cutscene, the opening cutscene is playing out, I'll explain a few things. So, 100% speedrun, also known as the puzzle percent speedrun, is where you collect all puzzle pieces in every level. So, there's six worlds, plus a seventh bonus world. The seventh bonus world has three levels, world six has uh, 12, I think? Yeah, 12. Um, world two through five have 10, and world one has eight levels. Each world has standard levels, which is your typical one that, um, like, say, World 2 as a as an example, because it's basically the most standard thing ever. World 2-1 through 2-6, which are your six standard levels you have in World 2 through 5. Then you have your secret levels, which are two, always, which are A and B. Your Kong level, or temple level as I like to call them, which is level K, and the boss levels. The boss levels don't have any collectibles and you just have to beat the boss as quickly as possible. The boss levels are quite important as they can uh, save a bit of time if you know what you're doing, but I don't use strats that save a time a lot, even though there would be one singular strat. But I'm playing Funky only because I'm used to him. The thing is, collecting every puzzle piece can be quite tedious and take a while. I've tried to make a run and upload it, but it's never really worked out. So I figured, okay, I might need some explaining and practice. And while I'm on it, this category is up and coming. There is another runner. I have not yet done a run. I used to, but I deleted those videos a while back. So, let's just check it out. All puzzle. For the longest time there was no speedrun of such kind. All puzzle pieces collected. Yeah, Skiller Killer 2003. Also did a few more speedruns. Like Super Mario Galaxy 2 and some other stuff. But his world record sits at a comfortable 3 hours, 51 minutes, and 44 seconds in funky mode. Now, the difference between funky mode and funky only is, in funky only, you only use Funky Kong, and that gives you a pretty large advantage, I'd say. So, here he is. The man himself. Funky Kong! No, wait. Hold on. Oh, that doesn't look good. There he is. No. So, Funky Kong. He's quite different from Donkey Kong and all the others. He basically has all their abilities, but better. Except for the one that Cranky has, which does make the normal speedrun faster. He can double jump, like Dixie Kong. He can hover, like Diddy Kong, but better, because he does it indefinitely. He has a so-called grab jump, which lets him go even higher. Basically, you jump and grab while you jump, so you can do a higher jump, higher initial jump. And since you can double jump after that, that's pretty good. He has an infinite roll, he can breathe underwater, he can roll over water without the help of other Kongs, he has five lives, he can stand on spikes, 
And so... Okay, that was it. I wanted to say so much more. The whole thing is, you start on a mangrove cove. Basically, if you start a new file, um, basically, you wanna create a separate speedrunning profile because I hope you have the cartridge because, well, you don't need the cartridge, but you wanna create a second profile for that. You then, before collecting any kind of collectible, even the first banana or balloon, because that could give you an unfair advantage later. I mean, it's technically not that bad if you have like 10 bananas, but whatever. You go back to the main menu, copy your file twice, and go back in game. So again, we use Funky Kong for purposes I explained right now. He has a double jump, he has a grab jump, which Donkey Kong, by the way, doesn't have because he doesn't have a double jump. The grab jump can only be effectively used when using Funky Kong, as Donkey Kong doesn't have a double jump. Also, Do Funky Kong's double jump allows him to get higher much, much quicker because Dixie Kong's uh, flutter or hover or whatever goes just a bit lower. Like it dips lower and then goes up again. Funky Kong's double jump has saved me a billion times at least, which is an exaggeration, I know. But it's true. So, you want to start out the game by rolling down this slope, but then steering to the left and swimming to get the first puzzle piece. Then you start swimming like this. You press X, wait a second, and then press A. Afterwards, you immediately press X again and do the same thing. This speeds you up and gives you control at the same time. Did you see what I did there? It's called an enemy bounce. Enemy bounces are quite simple. You do them all the time, they give you extra height, extra speed, and preserve your speed. For example, this oversized cricket bulldog thing, I don't know what it is, has two jump heights. The high one is the one you should be catching. By jumping over the high one, steering to the left a bit to cancel your speed and double jumping, you can get on top of this platform and get the first and uh, the second puzzle piece. You then roll down, jump over this one, and pull out the uh, grip thingy. How do I do this so quickly? Well, I hold onto it and then mash A. You will get a feel for it. Also, you should know where the banana birds go. You should get a feel for when you rip the grips out so you don't double jump on accident. This plant is quite vicious. It tries to eat you. If you stand on the ledge though, you can open this thing up and don't need to ground pound another time before it hits you. It will always hit you. Then you jump over here, get the puzzle piece, and roll down. You jump, jump, and this right here is quite quite the tricky part. You're technically able to, well, um, go from up here, over here, but it's really hard. You also need to collect all Kong letters, cause the bonus levels, the Kong levels, or the temple levels, have puzzle pieces. So what you do here is you roll off, grab double jump, and double jump again. It's quite hard, but it's if you get it down, it's okay. You jump past the rock and hope that the blue bird isn't too close to you, cause then you can lead it back here. Also, there's a giant tree then. If you lead the blue bird back here, you can do something called fast six. I at least call that fast six. Cause you can get this puzzle piece by shooting out of this barrel and not the first one. It's a few seconds faster. You just have to wait here, collect the N, and go over here. Maybe I'll have to split up the worlds too, but I don't know, maybe I don't wanna. The thing is, World 1 is pretty streamlined. Actually, it's perfectly streamlined and good to get into speedrunning. You jump onto this rabbit, ground count these boxes, and go down here. You have to step onto into the middle and collect a few bananas. I don't know how many these are, but just collect them all and try to um, collect the last one in the middle and not on the sides. Then you can just get the seventh puzzle piece and grab double jump your way up there. Again, grab double jump, grab jump, grab double jump. Easy. You roll over here, jump onto this one, and then try to double jump. But that's not enough height, you may say. Easy. Grab double jump of an enemy. This is possible. You just instantly have to press um, the double jump, so A or B, after you bounce off of the enemy. 
hold your butt, hold your jump button while you're bouncing on your enemy, and you'll do a do a high bounce, but not too long. Elsewise, Funky Kong will start to hover. It's a thing you need to practice, but it does help you get this bonus barrel quite early. Bonus rooms are annoying, but they're nearly every level, so you have to know how to do them. This one is quite easy. Just collect the bananas in basically something like a half ring. Drop down here, do a double jump up here, collect the last banana and the puzzle piece in one jump. And you're done. You land down here, so you roll and jump onto this helmet penguin. Penguin. Then you throw him while you jump and try to land on that spear green and get the G in one jump, basically. The enemy bounce off of the spear green will help. You then roll down here, do a few ground pounds, shoot back here, point, and don't jump into the gold barrel, not now. You pull out the puzzle piece here, and get into the gold. If you hit the DK sign, that's no time loss if you just don't press X or Y to hit the DK sign multiple times. It is not faster to get the DK sign 15 times, by the way. It's slower. Next up, Shipwreck Shore. This will unlock Funky Kong's shop, but you will never be going there, cause the, weirdly enough, the small collectibles in Funky Kong's shop don't count to the 100%. One that, and two, they're not puzzle pieces either. And since it's a puzzle piece run, yeah. You get this puzzle piece back here, roll over the water by just rolling into it. You don't need to press anything, just roll and then jump to get over the slide ledge. Jump into the water behind the blue bird and collect your second puzzle piece down here. Then quickly go back up and perform another grab double jump to hang on to you. You can then perform another grab double jump to get on top of this thing. And if you're good, you can roll through one of the penguins standing on the spinning platform or turning platform and ground pound yourself into another platform. Collect the lower bananas first, then the three in the middle, then the three on the sides, and try not to fall into the pit. Always watch out for the lower platform. It is always a saving grace. If you fall down, don't worry, hover and wait for it. Jump, double jump and collect the O, which is quite hard because the shark does block it sometimes, but you can jump on the shark, no worries. Double jump up here, and collect the fourth puzzle piece. Roll in, roll in, roll in, jump up here, ground pound, hop, fine pound, grab this guy, collect the puzzle piece, and only jump off of the turtle. If you're fast enough, you can avoid the shark and roll right in underneath him. This one's a bit trickier. I used to miss this puzzle piece all the time. You will need to break all the crates down here, collect the end on the way back, then go down here and you got another puzzle piece. You then go upwards, collect the next puzzle piece. You can also try and leave one crate behind so that you can collect the last puzzle piece on your way back, but it's just slower. You then jump on the water once, but go inside. Collect the last puzzle piece inside the seaweed from this treasure barrel. You then roll, jump, and jump again onto this raft. So here's where it gets tricky. You need to collect all these banana stacks, which is quite easy, sure. Also you may notice that I have 13 lives, and optimally you're not gonna die, but I never pulled off a deathless run. You then collect the G, but float over and by just tapping X again and again out of a roll, you go back here. What did I do? Well, you go in here and just keep swimming down. There's a strong current here. Normally you'd require Dixie Kong for this, but Funky Kong is an athlete swimmer and can just swim through the current on his own, unlike Doki Kong. Therein lies the secret exit. We collected every single one and by jumping out of the water and then using a double jump we don't even have to land. We collected everything, and there is actually no level that we skip by using the secret exit. We actually only add one, but that's what we want. 
Normally, in an any percent speedrun, which means finish the game as soon as possible, or as quickly as possible, or reach a game's ending, whichever that is defined as, as quickly as possible, Well, this is a puzzle person speedrun, so we're collecting a lot of stuff. In the any percent speedrun, you'd be skipping this level. The puzzle percent speedrun, you need to do it. 1-A Zipline Shrine is a pretty cool level, but I'm not here to talk about aesthetics and all. I already did that. I actually didn't, but I had two Let's Plays on Tropical Freeze. And yeah, it's pretty nice. It's like a mangrove, mangrove at night with a lot of stars. And no light pollution, which is beautiful. So, you wanna roll through the opening gate before it fully opens. It's quite easy, but you can time it in a way. Then you jump over this one and roll down here. This way you don't need to initiate another roll. Every initiated roll costs you two frames. So you wanna be rolling off of run roll as long as possible, because rolling is faster than walking, I guess. Jump off of this fly with a grab double jump, and then roll through this. So, you can stop a roll instantly by pressing in the opposite direction you're going. Collect all the bananas, and you're good to go. Perform another grab double jump, don't worry, you will never be hit, and double jump your way over here. You can then perform a grab double jump, I will say grab double jump a lot. Um, over to the vine. Don't hold onto this one. Because it'll fling you onto this and it'll slow you down. Roll again, do the same thing, collect the N, pull out this grappling hook or grab thing, and launch yourself into another bone storm into the mouth of this giant storm banana. Weird. This bonus room is quite difficult sometimes. If you don't know how to do the um, collect the bananas. If you miss one, you need to go back, but if you get them all in one fall or one jump, you can do it. Pressing A gives you extra height, which you do need to reach all bananas. Launch yourself through here. Perform a regular grab double jump to get on top of this thing. Jump high. Hold on to the vine. You can just shoot yourself out of the barrels four times and then hold ZR. The vine will always be there. This is due to something called local cycles. Okay, collect the puzzles here. Local cycles means that certain motions, double jump for the G, are dependent on your location or vicinity to the object. Meaning, if I'm close to a certain object, it's starting to move. If I'm far away, it does nothing. Movement in this game is based off of local cycles, meaning you need to be in a pretty tight a window of opportunity, uh, meaning if you mess up, you're never too bad off. There are three global cycles though, three levels with those, meaning that you have that every object, every actor in the level starts their movement when you start the level or when you gain control of Funky Kong, not when you get close to it. Local cycles are generally forgiving. Oh yeah, and the last puzzle piece could be reached through collecting the four bananas on the last spring platform on the outside. Instead of climbing up this vine, which is slow, we just perform a grab double jump, jump onto the turtle, on the way tortoise, I think. Yeah, it's a tortoise, because it's a land tortoise. But it could swim, so is it a turtle? I don't know. It's like a crossover. And break into this. This bonus room is annoying, but simple. You say, okay, how could that be? But it takes a while, and it's the second slowest. I'll show you the slowest later on. But by jumping from vine to vine like this, you can clear it in 13 seconds. The time on the top right corner shows how many seconds you have left, not how many uh, seconds you have needed until now. Until then. Jump onto the fish or the penguin, and be careful not to bonk here. You could technically collect the puzzle piece quicker that way. Let's see if I can do it. The um, bow green. Okay, so if you jump onto, or if you jump off of here, you can technically, if you jump onto the penguin and then perform a bit delayed double jump, a double jump that you delayed by a bit, you can 
get the puzzle piece quite soon. You can also dodge these fish. Grab onto the vine, go up, pull out this thing, and get the third puzzle piece. Shoot through these barrels, as it's just faster. Roll. Roll. Be careful not to stand on the spikes. Double jump here. Low. Be careful with your jumps. You can get through the two flies, but not getting hit here or not being hit here is quite rare. If you're good, you'll catch a cycle that lets you get a speed boost instead of a speed drop. If you're low on health, you can grab the barrel and jump onto this one. But there's also a way to get up here quite quickly by jumping onto the lower snail and then jumping onto this snail just barely. If you get hit, no worries. Jump onto this tortoise again and enter the second bonus room. Yes, this level has two. I hate bonus rooms, but it is a necessary evil. Collect the um, left middle and the center top bananas first, then go to the left to the right, then down here, collect these bananas, and this one. I'm not doing those ones fast, because you can speed them up by like 4 seconds. Tank a propeller hit, collect the G, because you have enough time for the vine to get back to you. Then shoot down here. So we need to take another secret exit. So where is it? Jump onto this crate, perform a double jump, a simple double jump will do I think. Then, roll over, perform a double jump again, then activate the old um, player. This is mandatory, by the way. No, just kidding, of course it isn't, but it's. Um, I always do it because it just gives me a bit time to relax. Roll and then double jump, because a roll gives you an insane amount of speed, and get to the barrel on the secret exit. This is quite easy, right? Okay, so these levels were all mm, not beginner friendly. 1-1 one, one isn't even beginner friendly. I think the most beginner friendly level is 1-2 or 1-3. Because they don't have that many um, endless pits. Busted by you though is a longer one. Oh, I forgot to mention. Each level has 5, 7 or 9 puzzle pieces. And each level that isn't a Kong level or a boss level has 5 letters, uh, four letters, K-O-N-G, forming Kong, of course. These unlock the special um, levels, the temple levels. Collect the first puzzle piece by going to the left and being shot up with barrel. Ground pound here to get the second puzzle piece. Get the K letter down here, double jump your way up, then roll and off of the a little higher ground, like right here, double jump or use this guy and then jump up here. There's another puzzle piece up here. If you do it fast enough, you could jump on the um, parrot vultures, perform a quick double jump here. If I say double jump, I mostly mean grab double jump, but if I don't mean grab double jump, I'll mention it. Some of the bushes here are, in fact, enemies. Just perform a double jump here and jump onto the bush to collect the puzzle piece early. The puzzle pieces will always spawn where the banana birds are, not where you are. Fall down until you reach this star shape. Then place yourself either, uh, then place yourself up here, slide down and let yourself fall down. You don't want to climb back up, so hang onto this vine until the platform comes out. Jump to the left, and then jump to the right with a double jump. Pull out this grip thing, wait a second, hover above this leaf, and then collect with some double jump, another puzzle piece. I hope I didn't trigger, I triggered the flies, okay. When you reach this specific bit of grass, this thing where I'm standing right now, you need to jump off in a double jump. So let me just repeat that. So you roll through, jump, Oh, I missed it up. You don't want to pull out the vine, because it takes a while. So, you roll through here, jump off. I messed it up again, wow. 
That never happened to me. I probably am used to doing it quickly. You just roll through these. Jump. Double jump. Delay the double jump a bit and don't grab. Don't grab, okay? Jump off of this bush and hop onto this plane propeller. Pull it up with a few A presses and holding the R. And get this. Roll over the bush and then be safe from the big one. And collect all the seven bananas. Or oh, seven banana bunches? Yeah, I guess so. Go on through this leaf, this leaf, and then roll down into the barrel. Right here, you'll need to collect the G. But how do you get there? Easy. You pull down the vine, hover over, and then, after getting the G, you go into the barrel. This is all not highly complex. It's doable, but doing it fast can be a stressful thing. So, I recommend practicing this level a lot. Trunk Twister is easy, on the other hand. It's a minecart level, meaning it's basically an auto scroller. I basically have the most experience with this level. So you start rolling, jump onto the snail, and go in. This is a bonus room, and the worst one at that. Shoot yourself up, then over, and I already messed it up. There's a fast cycle you can get if you do it perfectly well. And it's really hard. But I still got a 21. The perfect time is a 22. I can get that, but it's hard. Okay, jump up here. Perform a simple jump. Now roll and do a normal double jump without a grab to get into the minecart. And now you go. You jump to avoid going up slope. So if you go up slopes, here's the cave. You want to jump up them because they slow you down. Collect this puzzle piece by jumping high twice. Jump so it doesn't create an upward slope and I died. <laughs> wow. I had a bit too little time, I think, so I'm just gonna do it again. Jump, jump because you already have that puzzle piece. Double jump without a grab here. So if you go upwards, you want to jump up that slope. I can show it right here. Because elsewhere it's slow as you down. Every opportunity you get, you should also jump down slopes. And... No wait, slope... Inclines. You're yeah, right, that's the word I normally use. Inclines for upwards movement and slopes for downwards movement. So this is an incline, so you jump twice to get up. This is a slope, so you jump off it after being on it for a little bit. Not for too long. But for a little bit, okay? Jump over the ledges. Always have your priority straight there. Jump over the ledges and don't die. Dying costs a lot of time in these levels. More than usual. Jump onto this owl. I messed it up. Or just jump up the slope. Jump up the slope here, but let yourself fall into the end. No jumping there. Right here you can just continue jumping down the slope, but be careful with the propeller. But watch out for that propeller! If you need a heart, there's one here. But you can also get a slight speed boost from this. Jump up here, let yourself fall into the puzzle piece, and continue jumping up here. Conduct there, conduct there, sure. Wait, jump over this. Oh, that. I never had that. This is a cutscene trigger. You need to be a bit careful with this. Alright, boom. Right, whoa, and jump onto these broken rails after collecting the puzzle piece down under the um, burning rubble. Dive down to the left because you are further to the left than to the right. Jump up on the right and then do a double jump to go into the goal barrel. Quite easy, isn't it? Well, that completes the first four normal levels and in addition to that, the bonus levels. That's good, but there's one more level we have to clear. 1-K Swinger Flinger. The K levels are harsh. They are one of the hardest, most frustrating and insane levels, to say the least, in all of Tropical Freeze. 
and I am struggling with those quite often. Roll and catch the vine. I could have actually caught it there, but I didn't, so try it again. Since Funky Kong has a double jump and can hover, it's quite easy for him to catch the vines like this. So you just jump, double jump, double jump, and get this. You stand on this ball and then jump off. You pause here, jump off again, hope you get the puzzle piece. If you don't, jump back. It's no problem. Let it fall loose and jump onto this platform. If you get the jump onto this owl, you need to be very careful to jump onto this owl, the one under the four banana bunches, and grab onto the vine. Let yourself be transported through, then jump off and try not to be hit. You'll need your hearts later. Collect the puzzle piece, roll underneath that, jump through this tiny gap. I mean, it's not too tiny, it's fine. Go up here, wait. Go further, wait. Jump onto this owl. There is a shortcut, which is probably the most precise one in the game. By jumping onto the first owl, which had the puzzle piece, and then jumping onto this owl to the right, you can actually cut this entire section. Saves you like 5 to 10 seconds, I think. Or like 5, more likely. Go down here. Um, While this thing is swinging towards you. Ah, wait, no. While the one with the spiky enemy at the bottom is swinging away from you. You need to be rolling in that direction. If you perform the level well, there is no problem with that as the local cycle lines up perfectly. Collect all collectibles here. Don't worry, that's why you didn't take damage earlier. I hope. Even if you took two damage earlier, Funky Kong has so many lives that you still have a backup life. Jump over here. Do this section normally. There sure is a speed boost you could get from the platform. Collect. Get the vine and you're off. Don't forget to ground pound this small vessel, or else you'll miss the fifth puzzle piece and possibly lose 1 minute and 50 seconds if you decide to keep it up. Then you get the first present, or the first mysterious artifact. Which is basically just the way of saying, you know, after beating the final boss and collecting all six mysterious artifacts before that, you unlock the seventh bonus word, which is required. Because it has like 15 puzzle pieces. <laughs> So, the first boss, Big Top Bob. Boss enemies are quite simple. You take them down, and that's it. Really, it's that simple. You skip the cutscene, you roll to the boss arena, you skip the cutscene again by mashing your buttons as fast as you can, you jump onto his back. It's possible earlier, but it's not too hard to do that. You jump onto the fish, you can estimate when they appear, because this animation, the bobbing in the water, is based on a cycle. If you hit the cycle correctly, they'll jump out of the water nearly instantly, which I actually got the right there. Hitting the first and second fish isn't that hard, uh, isn't that important. Hitting the third fish, though, is really important. Right there, you can see, it's jumping out of the water instantly again. Now, after hitting a boss three times, they enter their next fix. Standard thing. Rule of three, Mario. But in Donkey Kong, it's three times three. So, he has three faces with three lives each. Each boss has them. So, this rolling makes him invincible, but then he just decides to, to glide. Then he sends eight of these penguins after you. You can kill them all if you have fun with it. I usually do it because I get bananas and get backup lives, but usually you'll have like nine enemies. Go where he'll land and jump when, he nearly hits the, when he's nearly hitting the ground. You'll then land on him as he is flopping up into the air, making it po the fastest possible strat. Then land on him again. What you saw there was, I land on his neck. And actually there's a strategy with Cranky Kong. By jumping onto these slopes with Cranky Kong's pogo and then jumping onto his neck, you can speed up the fight considerably, up to or down to one minute from two minutes with Funky Kong. This is the last time he'll throw fish. Just jump on the uh, sea urchin higher and do this one early by estimating when it's on screen and trying not to get it. Stand still, get hit, and hit him again. He claps again and he sends out his three penguins. You jump one, two, three, and then hit him 
make sure to own to press X before you can hit him multiple times. I just like beating him up so, and since I am under no time pressure, I can do that. Practicing these is very easy because the boss enemies are the most consistent ones. If you do the same thing, uh, if you do the same stuff, they'll do the same stuff. Basic stuff. So we beat the first world. Sure, this world takes about 20 to 25 minutes. Actually, my best is just under 22 minutes. I don't have it saved because I deleted a live split and we downloaded it for some reason. But in the next one, we'll be going to the second world. I I don't know what it's called though. We'll find out. Autumn Heights. And this was Lost Mangroves. So Autumn Heights is a little more complicated, but I'll get to that when I get to that. So I hope you enjoy this little format because I'll be learning speedruns and trying to teach them, or at least, you know, trying to describe them and explain them in a bit more detail. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Also stay healthy and stay safe, that's very important.